Hi, this is Lou Covey, Editorial Director of Footwasher Media, with a new tech press report from the Altera Corporate Offices in San Jose, California. We're talking to Phil Simpson about functional verification and the state of the market and technology. So, Phil, what do you do here? Well, I'm responsible for product planning of Altera's FPGA design methodology. So I develop the specifications for the design flow features that we provide the RN customers and I control the company roadmap in this area. Okay, so over the past few months I've gotten a ton of news releases from companies in the FPGA verification area. Uh, all of them say the same thing, that they are the holy grail, that they provide everything that people are using uh, FPGAs for ver need for verification. And it goes all the way from prototyping to different kinds of software to do this stuff. Uh, is there a holy grail or are we still looking for, or, or are we still just talking about point tools? Um, I think at this point we're still looking at point tools. We haven't really got the holy grail in terms of uh, FPGA verification of SOC type designs. However, we're moving in the right direction. Okay, so uh, wh where is the, the, the where are the primary areas that people are looking for uh, improvements in FPGA? Verification. So, so there's there's two sides of the FPGA verification. There's one there's verification of the FPGA design itself, and two there's using the FPGA to verify soft designs. The latter is where we're seeing the most progress from companies uh, in terms of the verification of FPGAs. That's really been handled by the main FPGA vendors, Altera, mm -hmm. and the competition. We provide solutions that customers can use for a chip level verification. When it comes to the verification of, of SOC, so an FPGA has been used to speed up the development of a SOC, this is where we're seeing the solutions coming from the EDA vendors, and this is where we've seen the biggest improvement, where they are building upon the framework that the FPGA vendors provide. Okay. Gary Smith told me that this is really a very big market, that uh, FPGAs have become so big now that they they rival SOCs in, in size, so the a lot of the verification tools that are used for SOCs can now work for FPGAs. Are we seeing um, more innovation coming out of the major vendors for this type of product, or are we looking more at the the small startups? So however, it's it's a mixture. Uh, the major vendors are certainly involved. So some of the stuff you're seeing for the major vendors are they're they're offering virtual platforms or virtual targets which are used in SOC development. Mm -hmm. These can equally well be applied to FPGAs if you're implementing that functionality in the FPGA. Okay. Now there's a lot of smaller vendors that have moved in where they're looking at trying to address two areas. One, getting the software engineer up faster, so effectively providing a bit more performance by implementing the design when the RTL is nearly complete, implementing it in multiple FPGAs. So you can do a little bit of hardware verification or RTL verification, but also that allows you to write your software code and run it on their virtual platforms as well. We're seeing also a lot of these systems coming from the smaller vendors. Okay. For the people that are creating new products, um, so like I, I heard that 90% you know, of all the electronics companies in China are actually guys developing products on their kitchen table. Are the tools that are coming through um, the, the startups, are they for these little guys or are they more for the large organizations? Uh, the price point is more targeted to somebody that has a traditional EDA budget, so okay. it is more applicable to the larger companies. So these these little guys who are just trying to create the, the next big product, uh, they're, uh, they're more still of a customer for for you guys? They're more of a customer for us, so they'll create their own boards with FPGAs on it and if they the volume is going to be there and they're going to go for a true ASIC or SOC-based ASIC, they'll prototype it on their own board using our parts or they'll go to production with our parts. Okay. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Yeah. Because I was just looking out of the, the, uh, the uh, lobby and you had this graph up there about how the uh, cost effectiveness of FPGAs have now surpassed SOCs. Why are people still designing in SOCs? Why are they still designing in SOCs? There can be 
multiple reasons. One of the main reasons where somebody might we would choose an SOC versus an FPGA is if you need mixed signal. So you mm -hmm. you've got a large analog component in there. You d you don't get that in the FPGA. We provide SERTIs, We'll provide you your um, Ethernet or your LVDS interfaces, but we're not providing analog capability. So mixed signal is something for sure that would still go to a, a okay. standard ASIC. All right. Well, thank you, Phil, very much. Yeah, it's a pleasure.